Hello, good evening. Hello, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Wilfredo. Hello, Melody. Good evening. How are you? Good, thank you. Thank you. How about yourself? I'm doing all right. Okay. Good. Excellent. All right, let's wait uh, maybe two minutes. Just wait for uh, others to log in. Okay, let's wait for it. Okay, everyone. Hello. Good evening. I hope you're having a good night. Yeah, good evening. All right. All right. Excellent, guys. Let's go ahead and get started, right? So we'll continue uh, doing the speaking practice today. I want to show you some new ideas, some uh, different uh, strategies that you can use. So let me share with you right uh, here the presentation. Uh, you guys have this presentation. Um, I, I keep adding information to it, right? Every class, but uh, I'll send it to you guys after uh, today. I'll send it to you today, uh, at the end of class so that you can have the last version. Uh, well, I hope you're uh, using some linking words, right? Uh, when you're speaking and writing, this is going to be very important, right? So what are some linking words that you normally use? Uh, for example, Wilfredo, when you're explaining different ideas, what, which ones do you normally use? First, mm -hmm. uh, second, and uh, finally. Okay. When yeah. I'm explaining some kind of ideas. Good. But yeah. in another cases, I use like uh, besides, mm -hmm. uh, nevertheless. Mm -hmm. You know, it depends. Yeah, good, good. You have to feel comfortable with it, right? Whatever you feel comfortable with. Uh, but you have to use a few. Yeah. Uh, what about you, Melody? Which ones do you normally use? Uh, I like to use, obviously, especially, mm -hmm. um, also to good. first. Good, excellent. Okay. Very good. Uh, let me see. Uh, do you have any questions here? Alguna que ven aquí that you want to know more or less what's the meaning? Do you have any questions for the, some of the ones that you see here? What's the meaning of oh, foremost? First and foremost. First and foremost, right? This is, uh, for example, uh, you ever hear some people when they uh, in the Grammys, right? When you see the Grammys show, uh, they they sometimes they get it. They get the the prize. They get the Grammy, and then uh, they say, "Well, first and foremost, I want to thank God. I want to thank my family." You ever hear that? So yes. they're saying is like the most important, the most important person, the most important idea. First and foremost, 
For, foremost quiere decir ante todo. Uh -huh. First and foremost. Uh -huh. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions of some of the ones you see here? Right. Honestly, I don't use them all. I, I don't, I know what they mean, but I don't use them, you know? But it's good that you have a few that you can use very well, okay? All right. Uh, well, I, I want you to always keep this in mind, right? When speaking and also when, uh, when, uh, when writing, we're going to use these, right? Okay. Right, so we talked about different topics, uh, different uh, structures that we can use for thought organization. You can use this one, you can use this one, you can use your own if you have a, a different one, okay? Whatever, whatever works for you, but you have to kind of organize some ideas, all right? Now, once you do it a couple of times, you realize, ah, no tengo que escribir todo esto, right? So, you go right down to the your main idea in detail. Okay. Uh, let me let me skip a little bit more. Aquí está. All right. This is the section I want to get to. Okay. Uh, this section is for today. It's something that I put together. Uh, I think it's going to help you. Uh, what do you understand by the phrase? This is an English phrase that we use. Uh, staying on target. What do you understand by this phrase? Staying on target. What do you understand by this phrase? I understand that it's like uh, being being in focus mm -hmm. in 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 what we're interested in for. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like. Uh, it's like uh, I want to get these goals be success and all that, you know, mm -hmm. I got to go for them, you know, that's okay. what I understand. Yeah, Stay so, this, in target. so this is your goals, right? And your goals, yeah. you want to stay in there, right? You don't want to be outside of your goals. Right. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. What else? Uh, what do you understand by the phrase answering the target question? What do you what do you think that means? Answering the target question. What do you think that means? Staying on target. Uh be yeah, be answering the target question is like when we're listening a video and we have to uh answer if I'm agree about it, I got to be <laughs> In that target, in that power. Yes. So yes. I can answer that question real. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Very good, Wilfredo. Excellent. That means staying uh, within the main idea, right? The staying within the purpose, right? So answering yes, the that's target. Right. That's right. Answering the target question means staying within the question, right? So we have a, a, a very famous saying in, in English: "Stay on target." That means stay on that question or stay on that topic. All right, I want to show you a video. Yeah, right. It's gonna be a, a very, very funny video. I don't know if you've seen it before, maybe from Star Wars or from another movie, but it's a, a very funny video, okay? So check it out, I wanna I want show you this. All right, bull's eye. This is like staying in the center, right? Switch to targeting computer. I'm in range. Target's coming up. Just hold them off for a few seconds. Stay on target. Almost there. Stay on target. Almost there. Stay on target. Almost there. On target. Stay on target. Almost there. Target. Almost there. Stay on target. There. All right, I hope I hope you see you've seen this movie before. I think this is from Star Wars, right? Some of the old, old, old Star Wars, right? From like the 70s. 
Okay, what, what was the guy saying? What was the phrase? Remember the phrase? Stay on target. Stay on target, right? What do I want to show you today? Basically, I want to show you that you have to stay within the target question, right? Stay within the target question. Okay, so we're going to we're going to go ahead and, and look at different questions, right? Not necessarily answer the questions, but I want you to go ahead and understand what the question is asking and say, okay, what am I going to say? The question is asking for A, B, C, D. I cannot speak about W, X, Y, and C, right? No, I have to stay within A, B, C. All right, so that's what I mean by staying on target. You have to stay within the target question. Let's look at some questions that are on the test. All right, for example, uh, in most cases, the question will guide you. Remember this, the question will guide you, right? So déjense guiar ustedes, right? You have to, because it's not uh, these questions, right? Las que no son eh, subjetivas, sino lo que son content-based questions, okay? Those questions, you have to answer according to the question, right? Now, las otras que son su opinión, allí pueden decir lo que quieran, right? Whatever you want to say. But these content-based questions, you have to stay within the target question. So let's look at this question. Some people enjoy, enjoy spending their holidays on the beach, while others go to mountains and natural, nature parks. For example, some people go to Costa del Sol, La Libertad, El Tunco Beach. Other people go to uh, El Pital, eh, La Montaña. So it says, which do you prefer and why? Okay. So here you have to stay within the question. Number one, you have to answer this one. Which do you prefer? Then you have to explain why. And you have to give examples, okay? And you gotta give some details, okay? So what do you have to do here? You have to do four things, do you see? Number one, state what you prefer. Number two, explain why, and then give examples and give supporting details. Do you see? This is what you have to do. So the question will guide you, okay? If you have to read the questions again, right? Ahí va a estar la pregunta en lo que están grabando su voz, right? So la pregunta no es que se la van a quitar a ustedes en lo que están grabando la voz, sino que lo van a estar viendo. So what, what you need to do is analyze the question and let the question guide you, right? So look, ya tienen sus cuatro ideas aquí. You have your four details, okay? Which one it will be the main idea? Main idea? ¿Cuál sería la main idea? This one, right? Which? This one, correct. This is the main idea, right? And yeah, this, will be, this will be your topic sentence, and these will be your examples and details. See? So ahí está su estructura, right? Right there in the question, right? So let the question guide you, right? Now, si yo quiero hablar aquí, por ejemplo, I want to speak about um, Christmas and what I like to do for Christmas. Is that within the target question? No, right? No tiene nada que ver. It's really not something that it has to do with the target question, right? So you have to remember, right? I don't want to talk about things that are not, not the target question, right? I don't want to, for example, uh, 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 traffic, right? I don't want to talk about something like that. Um, I want to talk about something that is relevant, okay? So for example, when you sp explain why, uh, well, I like to go to the mountains because I like the weather. I like the weather, cold. I like camping. Right? I like uh, outdoors. Okay. That's my explanation. Okay. And I can give examples of camping. For example, I like to go to the Pital. I can give some details. 
Um, I like to go to the pital with my family and we, I like to do a fire and I like to cook. Okay, ahí está. So this is what I mean, right? Staying on target means let the question guide you. Use the question as a guide. Let's look at another question. The female student expresses her opinion about the change in the student cafeteria. State her opinion and the reasons why she has it. Okay, so obviously esto va acompañado con una, una parte de listening, right? But here, uh, who do I have to speak about? Me? No, no I, I can't speak about me, right? This is about the female student, okay? Women. Yeah, right. So, imagino que en la conversación tal vez había un hombre, una mujer, or, uh, you know. So, I have to focus on the female student, right? Uh, ex, ex, uh, what is her opinion, right? So, voy a como, una vez más, voy a aclarar y confesar la opinión de ella, right? Then I'm going to give the reasons for her opinion, okay? So here I can have, okay, this is gonna be number one, number two, right? Lo que ella dijo como restate it, you know, say it again, like say it, summarize what she said, and then give her reasons why, right? And reasons why podría ser varias cosas. I mean, maybe she had two reasons or three reasons, whatever, you know? So maybe I have two different reasons or three different reasons why she said that, okay? So I can use the question to guide me. All right, let's look at another one. Uh, the question is your friend. Remember that, right? No le tengan temor, sino que the question is your friend. Look at this example, right? Eh, obviamente no estoy poniendo el, el reading, right? Or listening, que va, que va con esto. Solo quiero ver la pregunta. Using the examples from the lecture, Explain the two types of venture capitals. All right. Obviamente, ustedes ya como escucharon el listening, va tomando el examen. Entonces, ya van a saber qué significa venture capital. Okay. But you have two types of venture capitals, right? Pero para que sepan ustedes, venture capital, aquí les puse una definición, is a form of private equity and type of financing that investors provide to startup companies and small businesses that are believed to have long-term growth potential, okay? So venture capital es como inversiones, eh, como le puedo decir, um, como le dicen en español, um, son como esas, esas empresas que están como creciendo o tiene potencial, right? So the venture capital is my definition, right? This is my definition. Okay, I'm going to now focus on two things, right? Number one, the first type of venture capital and number two, the second type of venture capital. Okay, now, tengo que hacer algo más aquí en esta pregunta? No, right, that's it, finish, right? ¿Tengo que dar mi opinión? No. ¿Tengo que explicar cuál es mejor y cuál es peor? No. Right? ¿Tengo que explicar cuál es la más famosa? Cuál... No. Nothing. Which is better? No. I don't have to explain that. Okay? The only thing I have to do is explain the two types of venture capital. Si quieren empezar con una definición en lo que hablan, está bien. Right? Right? Según lo que escucharon, no su propia opinión. And then the first type of venture capital is blah, blah, blah. The second type of venture capital is blah, blah, blah. Right? And then explain it, right? No solamente decirla, sino explain it, right? So, uh, something else that you would do? ¿Qué hicieran ustedes? ¿Qué más hicieran? O cómo tomarían esta pregunta? What would you do? I would use linking words. ¿Usarían linking words ustedes? Yeah. To explain the first type of venture capital. Yeah. Okay. I would say the first type of venture capital is 
y allí fuera. Right? Number two, the second type of venture capital is, and I will explain it from there. Okay? All right, let's see. One more, one more type of question. All right? The, esta pregunta la saqué de un examen. Let's see. The question has the answer many times. Remember that. The question has the answers. For example, use the points and examples from the lecture. Explain the foot in the door technique. Okay? So, obviamente, tendría que escuchar el listening, right? El lecture para entender qué significa esto. The foot in the door technique, right? Pero para que ustedes sepan, the foot in the door technique is when a, a small request is initially made in order to get the person to later agree on a bigger request, okay? For example, uh, when a friend asks to borrow $5, then later asks to borrow $100, <laughs> right? So that's what significa foot in the door technique, all right? So what would you do here? This is what I would do, look, something like this. Empezaría con una definición, okay? The foot in the door technique is, and I will explain the foot in the door technique, right? Usando algo así como, como, como este recorte que, que encontré aquí en Google, right? Then I will explain the main idea behind the term, right? ¿Cuál es el concepto principal? And I will give two examples. Okay. Right? Me imagino que estos two examples vienen de the lecture. Okay. Right? So, ¿qué hicieran ustedes? ¿Al ¿Algo más? ¿Alguna observación? ¿Qué hicieran? What would you do? I will start with the definition, explain the, the concept, the main idea behind it, and then give two examples. Right? This is what I would do. Okay? ¿Por qué elegí es, eh, hacerlo así? Porque está dentro de ahí, de la pregunta. Right? For example, explain the foot in the door technique. First, I have to define what is that, the foot in the door. What does that mean? Then I will explain the concept behind it. And, le, and next, I will give examples. Do you see? ¿Vieron que lo que me está eh, pidiendo la pregunta, ¿es la misma estructura que voy a usar? Ya está ahí. ¿Sí? It's right there. Right? So the question has the answer. Right? So this is what I mean, right? Stay on target. Right? Quiere decir, stay within the this, these things. Right? All right? For example, ¿qué sería salirme fuera? Hagamos, hagamos un ejemplo. ¿Qué sería fuera? Salirme fuera de target. First, I will start with the definition, explain, and example. De hecho, estoy usando las mismas palabras. Uh, for example, what, what would be something that would not be on target? For example, give my opinion. Right? Eso sería algo que no me está pidiendo la pregunta, right? Si empiezo a dar mi opinión, ya me salí fuera de target. Right? Eh, explain uh, if this is good or bad. Explain if this technique is good or bad. Eso ya sería sal, salirme fuera. Uh, otro ejemplo de salirme fuera, staying on target. Um, eh, talk about a personal experience with this. Right? Talk about a personal experience with this, right? Eh, no me lo están pidiendo, so me estaría saliendo de target, okay? So these are things that I, I don't want to talk about this, right? I want to stay only on target, okay? All right, so you guys are ready? Let's go ahead and do a practice test. ¿Listos? Let's do a practice test. Um, let me go ahead. Get paper and pencil ready. Get your notes ready. And we're going to go ahead and do a practice test.
Okay, hold on a second. Let me open up the, the test. Okay, we're going to look at a, a, a version. Okay, I'm ready to share now. Let's go ahead and get started. I hope you have your notes there. I hope you have your notes ready. Okay. Remember to speak loudly into the microphone. When you're speaking, right? Don't whisper, speak at a normal tone. All right. In this question, you will be asked to give your opinion about a familiar topic. After you hear the question, you will have 15 seconds to prepare your response and 45 seconds to speak. Okay, listos, everybody's ready. Let's go ahead and um, take our notes. Use paper and pencil or pen, whatever you want. Do you agree or disagree with the following statement? Your friends are the most important influence in your life. Use details and examples to explain your opinion. Please prepare your answer after the beep. Please begin speaking after the beep. Okay, we'll stop it right here just so that we can go ahead and share notes. So let's go back to the question. What do you have for the question? What are some notes that you that you have? Do you agree or disagree? Friends are the most important influence in your life. Do you agree or disagree? What do you think? Uh, Andrea, what do you think? Mm, I'm in disagreement. Okay. Do you have uh, maybe two or three reasons why? Uh, first of all, uh, when we have a friend, we know they... Uh, they problems. And mm -hmm. sometimes I prefer to take, for example, for my life, old people. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, old people have more experience in life mm -hmm. than, in my case, my friends. Uh, they are for my uh, same range of age. Mm -hmm. And I think they are not enough uh, ma maduros. And mature. Is mature. So is the main reason that I I don't I'm in disagreement. Okay. All right, very good. I I understood several things. You said different ideas in different times. You say, for example. There's a problem because the age. Uh, you said also that you prefer to have older or listen to older people. And no sé si diste una más. What what were your main uh, ideas? Uh, the main idea uh, is that the, um, for example, my friends they don't have enough experience in their life. Okay, not enough experience. Yes. So that will be your first idea or your second idea or your only idea? Uh, my only idea. Okay, very good, all right. so. Está bien. Puedes usar solamente una idea. That's fine. If you want to use only one idea, that's fine. So your main idea will be uh, my friends are not 
do not have enough experience in life, right? Ahí está. That's your main idea, okay? Do you think you can give one example or two examples? Mm, for example, uh, when they want to solve a problem, uh, they prefer sometimes to escape mm -hmm. the, or avoid the problem. Mm -hmm. And mature people, uh, mm -hmm. they prefer uh, affront the reality and act and take their responsibilities. Okay, very good. Uh, when you say to affront the realities, you can say in English, to face the realities. Just face, face the reality. Uh, to face. Very good, okay, so you have your main idea. My friends do not have enough experience in life. And you gave me one good example, okay? Ahí está. That's, that's, your, that's your flow right there. That's your structure. Esa sería tu estructura, right? Uh, I disagree that friends are the most important influence in your life because, y ahora me vas a tirar la main idea que me dijiste, friends do not have enough experience. Do not have enough experience. Okay. And then what's going to happen next? Uh, is say an example for example right blah 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 and you start explaining mm -hmm. that okay very good right excellent excellent andrea entonces esa es la estructura right that is what i mean by thought organization porque si no andrea lo que va a pasar es que vas a estar jumping all over the place you're going to be talking about one thing and jumping to the other and jumping to the other okay now puedes empezar como repitiendo la pregunta Right? I disagree that friends are the most important influence in your life because blah, blah, blah. ¿Viste cómo empecé? Empecé yes. con la misma pregunta. Right? I restated the question. Okay? Y ese es un buen inicio allí. Para introducir qué? The main idea. And after the main idea, you can give a detail or an example. Okay. All right. ¿Qué más? ¿Qué más tiene allí? ¿Algún otro flow or structure? ¿Alguien más? Me, mm -hmm. I agree with the statement that friends are the most important influence in my life. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they are people who I share a lot of time. Mm -hmm. So uh, I end up learning about them. And maybe with time, I may start looking like them. Mm -hmm. because we share a lot of things in common. Additionally, friends tend to help me giving advice when, when I need it, and mm -hmm. I am actually willing to, to listen to them. Mm -hmm. Other kind of, kind of help may change the path of my life, as when they recommend me for a job and stuff, Mm -hmm. Or like when we decide to start together a project or something else. Okay. All right. Very good. Very good. I, I like I like the way you started because you used the question to introduce your main idea. That's good. That's good. Okay. Very good. Let's go to question number two. All right. So let's skip this one. All right, let's go to number two. You will then answer a question using information from both the reading passage and the talk. After the question, you will have 30 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak. Read the article from a student newspaper about a new plan announced by the university. You will have 45 seconds to read the article. Begin reading now. Okay, guys, skimming and scanning. 45 seconds.
Now listen to two students discussing the announcement. Did you read about the new plan? Yeah. What do you think? I think it's a great idea. Really? Why? Well, I just don't think the newspaper gives the most up-to-date information about activities. Well, the paper comes out weekly.、Uh, what's the problem? The fact that it comes out just once a week is the problem. I read the paper every Monday, but then I forget that they're having a concert or showing a film or whatever, like on Thursday or Friday, and this will always give me a reminder on the day of the event. Yeah, that way you wouldn't forget. And like, if something gets canceled at the last minute, well, that way you'd know, and you wouldn't waste time showing up and no one's there. Well, I hadn't thought of that. That would be really helpful. But do you think students are actually going to read the email? Are you kidding? Everyone checks their email at least once a day. And if maybe they also include the cafeteria menu for the day in the email, well, then people are definitely going to read it. <sighs> You're so right. I can't wait until they start. The woman expresses her opinion about the university's plan. Briefly summarize the plan, then state her opinion about the plan and explain the reasons she gives for holding that opinion. Please. Okay, let's discuss the question. What are the What are the things the question is asking you?、Uh, use numbers. So number one, what is the first thing the question is asking you? Number one, what is the first thing you're going to do? Make a summary of the plan. Correct. Summarize the plan. Number one, summarize the plan. Number two. Examples. No, not yet. Todavía no. Falta one more thing. What's her opinion? Yes, state her opinion. State her opinion. Right. So number one, summarize the plan. Number two, state her opinion. Now, her opinion puede ser algo como or she agrees with the plan. Punto. Yeah. You know, something short. And number three, what is the third thing? The third thing that is asking you to do. Explain the reasons, right? Detailed it. Exactly. Explain the reasons, right? So number one, summarize the plan. Number two, state her opinion. Number three, give the reasons for her opinion. Right. So ahí tienen su estructura. That's what you're going to do. Right. Okay. I'm going to let you go and prepare, and then、uh, maybe two two people can. Can do the speaking part. Please prepare your answer after the beep. All right. So right now we're preparing your answer. All right. So go ahead and prepare your answer. Please begin speaking after the beep. Okay, so right now, who wants to practice? Who's going to do it? Maybe we can have two people, right? So I'm going to play it so that you can see your time. All right, who wants to go? Who wants to try it? Can I try again? Okay, very good. Try it. Ready?、Um, the announcement. The announcement of the university、uh, is that they will send an email with the activities of the campus. So the girl、uh, is in agreement with the idea.、Uh, first of all, she will know about update information of anything real re related with the university with the university. Oh, but、uh, she detect some problem because if the university announced the news once a week,、uh, 
she couldn't update it she couldn't update with some changes for example if uh, for a concert uh, she's interested in that and but she the concert is cancelled she couldn't know that in this question you all right time up <laughs> very good very good okay i think you did a good job all right only that you needed you needed more time right to continue but i think you did a good job okay all right very good uh another person that wants to try it another person that wants to give the brief summary of the plan the opinion of the woman and the reasons for her opinion who wants to try it Somebody else? Somebody else? Somebody else? Can I? Yes, do it. Okay. Ready? I'm going to put the time. Go. The, the plan consists on. Um, I forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's try it again. Sorry. One more time. No problem. All right, let's do it again. Speaking after the beep. Go. The plan consists on replacing the weekly newspapers of the mm -hmm. campus uh, instead of daily emails that that make people get update. She she agrees with that plan because she finds very useful the reminders in order to not to forget uh, the dates. Also, when cancellations have to, to be sent, she won't waste time attending to that date. Also, cafeteria mean menu is going to be uh, very useful for all the students. Good. That's it. Good job. Okay, all right, excellent. So, complete con lo, los objetivos, right? Briefly summarize the plan, state her opinion about the plan. Does she agree In this question, you will read it. Uh, sorry, uh, state her opinion about the plan. Does she agree or disagree? And why does she agree or disagree? Okay, so I think you did very good in bringing up the points. All right, very good, very good. Let's look at another question, all right? Let's see, I think we have time for maybe one or two more. In this question, you will read a short passage on an academic subject and then listen to a talk on the same topic. You will then answer a question using information from both the reading passage and the talk. After the question, you will have 30 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak. Read the article from a student newspaper about a new plan announced by the university. You will have 45 seconds to read the article. Begin reading now. Okay, skimming and scanning. Now listen to part of a lecture in an education class. So I used to teach a class of eight-year-olds, and one problem I sometimes had was getting the kids to raise their hands when they wanted to answer a question. Like lots of teachers, I had the rule that if a student wanted to answer a question, they needed to raise their hand in the air and wait till I called their name before speaking. That gave all the students a chance to participate which helped everyone get more out of the discussion.
but some kids had trouble following the rule. I remember there was one girl, Sarah, who didn't raise her hand when she wanted to answer a question. She would just call out the answer. And this was frustrating for the other children who were waiting patiently with their hands raised. So one day when Sarah called out, I asked her if she knew that calling out was unfair to the other students. I said to her, Sarah, do you realize that when you call out answers without raising your hand, you're not being fair to the other students. You're not giving them a chance to answer questions, too. And I didn't wait for her to answer. I just continued teaching the class. And after that, any time I asked the class a question, Sarah didn't call out the answer. She raised her hand along with everyone else. Explain how the example from the lecture illustrates the technique of questioning awareness of effect. Please prepare your answer after the beep. Okay, I'm going to stop it right here because I just want to uh, bring something to your attention, right? So what was the person giving an example, right? Now, all you have to do here for this question is repeat the example. Try to repeat as much as you remember from the example. You don't have to give your opinion. You don't have to explain the, the technique. You don't have to uh, evaluate the technique. No. Lo único que tienen que hacer es remember the example. Okay? All right. Please begin speaking after the beep. Okay. Who remembers the example? Who wants to try it, right? So you have, I think, 60 seconds. Right? Ready? Yeah, I'll, I'll do it myself. Oh, okay, Wilfredo, ready? One, two, okay, three, so. go. Okay, this is about the example of reading that uh, they're explaining that when these students are not paying attention, what the teacher do is asking a question briefly. So if they don't, if they don't answer your question, because they're not expecting answering the question, but they're, you used to do that just to call his attention. So they pay attention to the class and don't interrupt the whole class. Besides that, they keep on going with the class as, as, as it has to be. And the student um, may uh, uh, be able to concentrate in the class. Excellent, good That's job. It. Good, good. Excellent, good job, good job. All right, explain how the example from the lecture illustrates the technique of questioning awareness of effect, all right? So I don't have to necessarily explain the technique. I don't have to evaluate. I just have to give the example uh, that the teacher uh, talked about, right? Okay, very good. One more person. Somebody else wants to try it? So this is like uh, like storytelling, right? As a, as a, for example, I don't know if you ever played the game telephone, right? You hear someone say something and then you repeat it, right? This is basically all you're doing here. Remember the main points of the lecture, remember the example, and repeat the example. That's it. Who wants to try it? One more. All right, we're gonna to go to the next question then. Nobody wants to try it. Beep. All right, let's go to the next question. Question number four. So remember, the new test, remember the video that I showed you yesterday, the new test is said that you have four questions now. Um, it used to be six questions, but I think they made it shorter. 
right? Don't be asked to summarize important information from the lecture. After you hear the question, you will have 20 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak. Listen to a part of a lecture from a history class. The professor is talking about the Industrial Revolution. Back in the 18th century, in a time known as the Industrial Revolution, some countries, well, England in particular, started using new technology, like steam-powered machines, to produce goods. And the use of these machines brought about some significant changes. Let's go over two main changes that occurred. One change was that the center of production moved from homes to factories. Um, let's take fabric or cloth as an example. Historically, for a very long time, people had made cloth by hand in their homes, earning a little money from their home-based cloth production. But then these new steam-powered machines for weaving cloth were invented and placed in factories, and these machines could weave cloth much more quickly and efficiently. So there wasn't any reason to keep making cloth slowly in homes when it, it could be made faster on factory machines. Thus, the majority of cloth production shifted from home-based businesses to factory production. Another result of the new technology is that cities started forming around factories. Like, let's say there was a cloth factory that was built in a certain small village. Now, of course, the factory needed workers to operate the machines used in cloth production. So the factory would hire a lot of rural workers who would then move from the countryside to the village. So instead of being spread out all over the countryside, the workers started to congregate in the village with the factory. As a result, the village got bigger and bigger and eventually grew into a city. Using points and examples from the talk, describe two changes that occurred after machines began to be used for manufacturing goods. Okay, so the, the topic, the main idea was machines technology used to produce goods. And uh, there was two effects of that, right? Do you, did you copy those? What were the two effects? First, the center of production mm -hmm. moved from home to, to factories. Yes, yes, very good. And number two, did you get number two? They convert some uh, like village factories. Mm -hmm. All kind the people of. moved for one. Well, the people move for a place around the factories and mm -hmm. that convert uh, like a village. Yes, correct. So people because for eight people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Continue. So people, uh, some people, uh, foreign people, or uh, move to the center of the village of factories. Mm -hmm. Correct. What else? Point number two. So cities this be, around the this be. Right, uh, cities formed around the factory, okay? Wilfredo, what did you get for number two? Yeah, what I got is that the, these big changes that they got was that uh, instead of being working at home, mm -hmm. doing these uh, uh, things, when they create this steam machine, when they create this steam machine, mm -hmm. it was better and faster. So what they did is create these uh, factories and then uh, too many people went around there so they can uh, uh, produce more faster than than it was in home, you know? Yes, yes. That's, good. What, that's what I get. Good. So that was that was number one, right? The one that you're describing. Uh, number two was mm -hmm. that the, 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 the cities began to form around the factory because people will move from the countryside to work for the factories and then they just stay there, right? Right. 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 That's right. It's like, for example, Leo. imagine. Uh, no, sé, no sé si conocen ustedes la área de, de Ciudad Arce, right? That area, there's a yeah. lot of fa factories there, right? 
That's right, that's right. There are a lot of factories there, so too many people. You see these big colon colonias around there <laughs> that they've been created. Yeah, that's that's right, because there is a yeah. lot of employees. <laughs> good, good, yeah. All right, very good. So Aita, right? We got the two the two main ideas. Using points and examples from the talk, describe the two changes that occur after the machines begin to manufacture goods. So I stand, right? So all you have to do is number one, number two. So you will use linking words, right? Well, the first effect, y pueden, pueden usar la misma, lo que está ahí en, en, la, en, la, en la question. Well, the first effect that occurred after machines begin to be used for manufacturing goods is blah, blah, blah. The second change that occurred after machines began to be used for manufacturing good is blah, blah, blah. So, es decir, pueden usar la misma, hora, la misma pregunta para introducir su idea, right? Very good. So, who wants to give it a try? We have time for, for one person to do it. Who wants to do it? Explain the two changes that occur after machines begin to be used. Who can do it? Who wants to do it? Come on, you guys can do it. I know you can do it. Yes? Come on, volunteers. All right, nine kitty, nine kitty pasa. <laughs> All right, this is this for you. All right, you want me to try? <laughs> you can try it. Do this it. So you want me to try for it? All, All right, right. I, and so, I, wait, I'm going to put the time. In the time of... Please prepare your answer. Okay. I'm going to put the time. Ready? Okay, one minute, go. Okay, describe. Okay, describing the two changes that occur for a faster machine in the uh, revolution, in the uh, industrial revolution was the technology. The technology came in, made two big changes into the, uh, into the um, people and cities, because when they when they used to create goods to to factory goods and at homes, but when they invented this new technology of I mean machines with new technology, they uh, used to create these goods very fast. So. And then they start to build factories. And after that, the factories were attracting a lot of people <laughs> for employ to employ them. Okay. So the people came around this, the, uh, the factories to live around there because, you know, to be close from the factories. Okay, uh, very good. Time's it. That's it. That's <laughs> Time's it again. up. Time's up. Okay. <laughs> te, te complicaste mucho. There was only two. Number one, homes. People yeah. move from, from, from homes to factories, right? The production of goods moved from, from home to factory. To yeah. factory. Number one. Number two, your factory. That's cities right. started to form around the factories. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Point number yeah. one, point uh, number two. Uh, uh, all right. All right. All right. So, I can't with it. <laughs> yeah, remember you have to right. stay within the question, right? All right. Very good, guys. Yeah, within within the target. <laughs> yes, you stay within the target, right? Stay within the target. So it remember that the question is there, right? Está ahí para que para guiarlos, right? So that's what you have to do. Okay, is everybody finished with section three? Finish with the in the in the in the plataforma. I I'm, I'm done with it. I'm done with it. But uh, there, are the you know, there is only. Uh, I mean, it has mm -hmm. to be like. Uh, uh, I mean, explain speaking some kind of a. Okay. I mean, uh, that's a speaking test, you know. But uh, I've been trying to to elaborate like. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, hear my voice and all that, 
but I yeah. couldn't do it in the uh, platform. I got to go out and make it in my phone and all that. So yeah, that's fine. But I've been you trying. Do, you can I've do it in your phone. I, at the age okay. of, lo mejor sería listen to your phone, right? Like for example, right, Wilfredo. Eh, ahorita tú, tú pasaste de último, right? So you 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 gave your opinion, right, etc. What I recommend is that you record yourself. Te grabes a ti mismo, right? And then after okay. that, go back and listen to the lecture again, okay? And then mm -hmm. play, play your audio. A ver si, All si te right. desviaste, tal vez yeah. te desviaste, me desvié, hablé algo que no tenía que hablar, you know, so that you can evaluate yourself, okay? That's yeah, my recommendation. Yeah, All right. All right. Thank you, thank you. Okay, everybody. Well, thank you. Thank you for being here. I hope you're finished with section three in the platform. Next week, we're going to uh, finish uh, the writing section, right, which is the last section of the test. Okay, have a good, have a good weekend then. Take care. Thanks. Sam. All, right, All right, you too, man. Have a good weekend. Bye. Good night. Bye.